All right, so this is a long problem. It reads, a shopper pushes a grocery cart 20 meters at a constant speed on level ground against a 35 Newton frictional force. He pushes in, in a direction 25 degrees below the horizontal. And we have a whole bunch of things to look at that we'll go through one at a time. All right, so let's first um, identify our picture. So here we have our shopper and he's pushing a cart sort of down. I should draw that more down at an angle. He's kind of pushing on that cart down at an angle and he's moving it uh, 20 meters across the store floor. We're told that the frictional force acting on that object is 50 newtons. And because it's moving along a horizontal surface and friction opposes that motion, and I've drawn that motion to the right, friction is gonna be pointing in the leftward direction. All right, we also know that the force being applied by the shopper is 25 degrees below the horizontal, so negative 25 degrees relative to the displacement. So the angle that the shopper is applying their force is at a minus 25 degrees. All right, so the first problem says, I guess it's up there on your screen, what is the work done on the cart by friction? So we wanna keep in mind that we're gonna remember our work relationship across this problem as the force applied times the distance the object is moving times the cosine of the angle between that force and the displacement vector. All right, so part A is the force, sorry, the work done by friction. So we have the work done by friction, which is gonna be that force of friction times that displacement times the cosine of the angle for that friction relative to the displacement. Well, the displacement is horizontal to the right, friction is horizontal to the left. So we have 35 newtons times our distance of 20 meters times the cosine, since they're in opposite directions, of 180 degrees. And so when we figure that out, we see that the work done by friction is negative 700 joules. Now remember, work can be negative. It tells us that the direction of the force is opposite the direction of the actual motion that has taken place. So it's working against. A negative in work means it's working against the motion in the direction opposite that motion. All right, part B reads, what is the work done on the cart by the gravitational force? Okay, so we need to recognize what are the forces acting on this cart. So let's just draw a quick free body diagram of the cart. We were already identifying the frictional force uh, when we set up the problem. But if we draw a free body diagram of the cart, we know there's that force of friction. We know gravity acts in the downward direction that's between the cart and the earth. We have our shopper putting, pushing down and to the right, and we know that angle there is 25 degrees, as we've identified. And of course, the cart is resting on the ground. The problem actually isn't gonna ask about the normal force, but there is a force between the ground and the cart itself, and that's purely vertical in this case. So if we're gonna draw free by a dagger, we wanna make sure we draw all those forces on it. All right, so part B is asking about this force of gravity. Well, like any other force, the work done by the force of gravity is indeed the magnitude of that force of gravity times the distance that the object has moved times the cosine of the angle between the displacement vector and the force vector, which I'm going to call the angle F sub G. Now, we are given how heavy the cart is. So we actually don't know the force of gravity. We do know that it goes 20 meters, but what we want to recognize in this part is this angle. The angle of the force of gravity is perpendicular to the motion. So we want to recognize that F sub G is negative in this case, 90 degrees, but the idea is that it is perpendicular to the motion. Forces acting perpendicular, no work is done. 
And so we know, because the cosine of 90 or negative 90 is zero. So we know that the work done by the force of gravity is zero joules. Now, I wanted to identify it for you as an equation so you can see where that comes from. But from a conceptual standpoint, it's okay to remember that the force done, uh, to, in order for force to do work, there has to be a component of that force in the direction of the actual displacement. And in the case of, in this example, gravity is perpendicular, so no work can be done. All right, part C says, what's the work done on the cart by the shopper? The work done on the cart by the shopper. So we're going to part D up here. Oops. We know that the work done by the shopper is going to equal the force of the shopper times the displacement times the cosine of the angle of the shopper. Now again, we want to keep in mind that this cosine here, this angle, remember, is the component gives us the component of the force in the direction of the displacement. So that's what this does. Gives us that component of the force in the direction of the displacement. All right, that's going to be important as we work through the work done by the shopper. So we need to know the force by the shopper. Okay, we need to know the force by the shopper. And there's going to be some information in our problem that's going to be important for us to recognize in order for us to understand what that force might be. We're told that the shopper moves that cart at a constant velocity. Constant velocity. So that tells us that the acceleration of the cart is equal to zero. And it, we learned in our force analysis, so if you are, want to re-familiarize yourself with that, go check out those conceptual force ideas, balanced and unbalanced forces, that if I have no acceleration, the sum of my forces in that direction are equal to zero. If we look at our free body diagram, in the direction of the motion, the one that I care about, I have the frictional force and I have a component of the force by the shopper. And what component is that? The horizontal component. And so because my forces have to be zero, that tells me that the force of friction plus the horizontal component of the shopper have to equal zero. All right, well, I know the force of friction is equal to negative 35 newtons. I don't really need that N in there. It's going to get myself all mixed up. And so that has to equal O plus the force of the shopper horizontally. All right, well, I'm just going to solve for that. We end up with 35 is equal to the force of the shopper in the horizontal direction. If I wanted to determine the force of the shopper in the horizontal direction, I would take this component. That's the force of the shopper horizontally. So that is equal to the force of the shopper times the cosine of the angle relative to that horizontal. Well, the cosine of the angle relative to the horizontal is the component of that force in the direction of the displacement when I think about my work equation. So this is the cosine of the angle of that shopper. And this becomes important. So I'm going to take this uh, relationship down. And I'm just going to write it as the work done by the shopper is equal to I'm going to move these two around for your visual inspection. The force of the shopper times the cosine of the angle of the shopper. Okay, so I just flip-flopped these two times D. And I'm allowed to do that using the associative law in MAP. Well, that's this. And that means that the force of the shopper times the cosine of the angle is 35. Remember that we figured out because the acceleration is zero. So the work done by the shopper is equal to 35 
times our displacement of 20, which is equal to 700 newtons. So that's our, or not newtons, joules, excuse me. That force is on the brain. All right, so that's the work done by our shopper. Okay, the next piece says, what's the force the shopper exerts on the cart? And let's use some energy considerations. Well, the work done by the shopper is 700 joules. Now, there's multiple ways to do it. We're asked to do this using energy considerations. So we're going to go, here's number D. We know that the work done by the shopper is equal to the force of the shopper times the displacement times the cosine of the angle of the shopper. All right. So we have 35 is equal to the force of the shopper times 20 times the cosine of minus 25. And now I can solve for my force by the shopper. And we found that we find that the force by the shopper is equal to 38.6 newtons. So using that energy consideration, my work equation, we can see that the force of the shopper is 38.6 newtons. Now, I will just point out that we could have also used our force analysis to do that. It didn't ask us to, but it's just another method. We know that 35 is equal to the force of friction, which then had to be the uh, equal to the force of the shopper in the horizontal direction. And we end up really with the same equation, but through sort of a different conceptual idea. All right, and then the last question, part F, asks us, I gotta find room on my screen, part F asks us, what's the total work on the cart? Well, we wanna keep in mind that the total work on the cart, so we, I think we can go over here. So uh, this is part F. The net work is equal to the sum of all works. Every force has the potential to do work. So we know that the force of friction does work, negative 700 newtons. So the force of friction, which is negative 700, not newtons, joules. The normal force, well, that could do some work. They don't, I've got to be a little clearer here. Let me not put. So this is the work of friction plus the work potentially done by the normal force. Well, that's perpendicular to the motion, so that work is zero. Plus the work done by the shop, er, which we've determined is 700 joules, plus the work done by the force of gravity, our last force, which we talked about already. We calculated it to show, that it, show why it's zero, but it too is zero, it's perpendicular to that motion. And so we find that our network on the shopping cart is zero joules. All right. Now, we may have appreciated, if we are already familiar with the idea of the work energy theorem, we might have appreciated that part F indeed had to be zero joules. If you haven't done the work energy theorem yet, go check out that video. If you have, remember that the work energy theorem tells us that the net change in kinetic energy is equivalent to, the net change in total energy is equivalent to the amount of work being done. Well, we're on a horizontal surface, so we don't get any changes in potential types of energy, and we're dealing with, of course, this type. But we're moving at a constant speed, so our kinetic energy is not changing, and our net change in kinetic energy is in this example is equal to our network. With no change in kinetic energy, there's no network being done. Work's being done, friction's doing work, the shopper's doing work, but the network is zero because we aren't having a change in the energy of the system. All right, good job.